So when you get your home energy bill, it lists the usage in kilowatt hours. But when you go to the store, you'll see things like 12 watt light bulbs, 9 volt batteries, and vacuum cleaners with 15 amps of sucking power. But what do these numbers even mean? I mean, why do we have so many different units to measure something that seems as straightforward as electricity? Surprisingly, the answer isn't just so appliance companies and physics professors can confuse you. It's because several important things have to happen in an electrical circuit for electricity to flow and for work to be done. You can think of a circuit kind of like the faucet on your kitchen sink. If you want water to come out, you need two things. You need the water itself and some pressure to force it through the pipes, out your faucet, and into your neti pot. Similarly, an electrical circuit uses electrons to carry the electricity, kind of like the water in our faucet analogy. But those electrons need something to push them along a circuit. This electrical pressure is what we call voltage and is often provided by two terminals, one with a positive charge and one with a negative charge. So on a battery, electrons flow from the negative end through whatever it is you're trying to power and then into the positive end where they'll stay unless your battery is rechargeable. If you're plugging something into the wall, this voltage is instead provided by your power company. And although voltage just measures how strongly electricity is being pushed through a circuit, it's important because many circuits are designed only to accept a certain number of volts, which is why the hairdryer you bought in Monaco might release magic blue smoke if you plug it in in New York. So now that you know what volts are, what about amps? Well, in this context, amp isn't short for amplifier, but rather for ampere, which is a unit of how much electrical charge is flowing past a given point in one second. So when you put volts and amps together, you can tell how much current is flowing and how hard it's flowing. Multiply these numbers and you get, finally, our third unit, the watt. Let's go back to our water analogy for a second. Let's suppose you wanted to spin a small water wheel because you just like watching things spin, or I don't know, maybe you have it hooked up to a generator. Let's say you have a really powerful water pistol that forces water through a tiny nozzle. Even though the small nozzle means the total volume of water flowing per second isn't all that much. You wouldn't want to fill your swimming pool with it. The high pressure creates a strong jet that can spin the wheel easily. But suppose instead of a water gun, you have a much wider hose that doesn't push the water out nearly as strongly, but because the hose is a lot wider, more water flows per second overall, and the wheel ends up spinning at the same speed it did with your water gun. If we think of the hose and the water gun pushing out electricity instead of water, we could say that they're delivering the same number of watts. For a more practical example, let's say you have an 1100 watt power supply for your computer that's drawing full load because you're rocking four-way SLI or something. So if you plug that into a standard 110 volt North American outlet, some simple math tells you that 10 amps of current is running through your power supply. But if you take that same power supply and use it with a 220 volt European outlet, you're only drawing five amps. But since the amount of power in watts is the same, your computer will work just fine in both places, even though you're using different volts and amps. Well, that makes sense, Linus. But why the heck then is my energy bill in kilowatt hours? Is that a unit of time? No, actually, scientists are just mean. It's a unit of energy. Watts and kilowatts express how much energy is consumed per chunk of time, something scientists call power, which is not the same as energy. But if you multiply a kilowatt by an hour, 
the units cancel and you're left with a number that shows how much energy that you hogged by running your air conditioner, gaming rig, and novelty lava lamp all at once. But what if you're more concerned about battery capacity instead of what's coming out of your walls? Well, if you're buying a replacement battery or a battery pack, you might see their capacity listed in milliamp hours, again, not time. Doing the math shows that this is a unit of charge, not energy or power. So going back to our water example, this is like how much water you have in a bucket not how much is flowing or how fast is flowing. So a bigger bucket means you could charge your phone more times and you can learn more about that and battery banks in this video here. So go forth then with your newfound knowledge and expertly buy the right voltage adapter, install the correct power supply, or just ace your electrical engineering exam if you wanna do more with your life than work for some second rate YouTube channel. But Hey John, second rate YouTube channel? Like, is that supposed to be a joke? That's not funny. Speaking of things that are no joke, Tunnel Bear VPN lets you tunnel through up to 20 different countries, well, one at a time, but allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as though you are in a different country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, Ah, this fell apart. PC and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. Just choose the country in the app, turn Tunnel Bear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. It's actually faster than that. You don't even have to wait around for a silly animation. You just hit the switch and boom, you're pretty much ready to rock. And when you turn it on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched, so you look as though you're in a different country. It lets you bypass all those annoying details that typically come with using a VPN for personal use. There's no DNS or router settings, and they have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log your data. The best part of Tunnel Bear is you don't have to take my word for it. Try it for free. They give you 500 megs of data for nothing. You even get more if you tweet about them, by the way, with no credit card required. And then if you decide to upgrade and you want to save 10%, then head over to tunnelbear.com slash Linus and save that money. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other channels, comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe. I think that's the fastest one I've done yet. Though I might have negated all the time savings by rambling about it now.